So now let's discuss terminal tackle. Basically anything that's attached to your to your rod and reel to include your fishing line is considered terminal tackle. And like we discussed earlier, terminal tackle items are the, just those things that you're going to lose and you're going to lose a lot of them. And again, taking a look at that Altoid Survival Can, there, there's just very little terminal tackle in there. And without that terminal tackle, you're, it's, it's useless. So my estimate depending on exactly what you put in that Altoid survival can. It's going to last you a few days, probably a week at best, unless you put a lot of hooks in there. All right. So let's discuss some of the terminal tackle that I recommend. And I take the approach, um, I'm more familiar with freshwater, and there's a lot of freshwater ponds and rivers um, in my area, so that's in my survival plan, that's what I'm going to count for. If you're at salt water, then some of these items will be the same, but you might have different sizes or different items altogether. So, from my perspective in fishing is that it's easier to catch small fish and harder to catch big fish. With that, if you can catch small fish, you can use them as bait to catch big fish. So if you catch a two inch bluegill using a very small hook and then you can turn around and put that same bluegill on a larger hook and throw it out there, put it on a bobber and catch a larger fish. Or you can use it as cut bait. So my whole thought process evolves around that. Now when I'm out fishing for fun, I, I really enjoy bass fishing. Or I enjoy going cat fishing. Or I might just bluegill fish all day long. Um, and I will change my tackle to those to those fish species and to the size of fish that I've, I'm trying to catch. But what I have here on the table is what I consider the minimal items needed to catch fish, freshwater fish in a survival situation. And we'll go into the different quantities and how I pack them and all those things. The, the biggest challenge with, with fishing is one, fishing productive areas, but two, making sure that you scale your tackle to the type of fish that you're trying to catch. And that's the biggest issue that I see time and time again when I watch other people fish. It's kind of amusing. A lot of times when I'm out there catfishing at a little pond, you know, we're steadily catching fish and people think we've won the lottery. And so they come over there and check us out and see what we're using and all these other things. And, you know, we attract a lot of attention. And the, the reality of it is, is we're using the same stuff as them usually, um, but we're just using the right sizes of stuff. We're putting enough bait on your hook or not too much bait on your hook, using a smaller hook instead of a larger one, or whatever the case may be, is we're just matching our presentation to the actual fish that we're trying to catch. So with that in mind, let, let's start from small and work our way up. Let's go over hook sizes first. And hook sizes, if you're buying them online, are a little misleading. You really don't know how big they are. And so right here we have a series of hook sizes, and, and we'll, we'll go over them. And the way that it works is if you have size 1, and this is size 1, if you go 1, 2, then we jump up to 4. Um, if you go that way, the hook sizes get smaller. Starting at 1 this way, if we go 1, one aught, this is actually a three aught, and then an eight aught. The larger the number, the bigger the hook. So at one, one is the biggest hook size in this series in the single numbers. As you go up two, four, six, eight, ten, or more, the smaller the hook that you get. So this is a size eight bait holder hook. All right. At one, if you go aughts, this is a three aught, and then this is an eight aught. Eight aught is actually larger here. So that's the tricky thing about hooks. But we're going to cover them right now. Again, this is size one hook. One, uh, two, and then four, I believe. Um, right here, one, two, four. These are the sizes that you really want to use for live bait presentations um, or tree lines or something like that. Um, these are plain shank hooks. They can be bait holder hooks. Um, great sizes right there. I like, again, for using bluegill or whatever as live bait or cut bait. Um, your six and larger, um, so um, this is a size six, excuse me, this is a size four, this is a size six. These are great for your bluegill or whatnot, um, and even the bait holder series right above them. So that's what the size hooks you're going to use your bluegill or crappie. For bluegill or crappie, I really like these two Aberdeen hooks. These are bait holders, these are Aberdeens. I really like Aberdeen hooks for bluegill or panfish. All right. You could literally catch a bluegill with this size hook, 
take it off, hook it through the back part of it, and throw it back out there and catch a larger fish. The only challenge is with these Aberdeens is these are thin wire hooks normally, and they will you will straighten out that hook if you get a good bass. Um, so that's why I recommend the plain shake hooks because they're a little bit larger. Now for catfish, I really like circle hooks, and so this is a size three aught circle hook. This is a great hook. I mean, you can catch big cats with it. Um, but this is the hook that I usually throw out when I'm catfishing in small ponds. If I know there's some monster cats out there, I'll go in size larger. So I might fish from 5 aught to 8 aught if there's some really big catfish out there. I just want to give you a size perspective. But size 3 is a great hook. Another type of hook is a treble hook. And it kind of looks like an anchor, but it has three hooks on it. This is what's on most of your fishing lures, um, bass fishing lures. You can also use them. And when I first started catfishing, this is what I would use because you can really get your dough bait on there or whatever and catch a lot of catfish that way. Um, but it's more for, um, you know, lure fishing, if you ask me. All right, so that's your hooks. Next, let's talk about weights. And there's only really a couple types of weights that I recommend for fishing. And if you just want to get away with two of them, you could. One is a split shot weight, and it's just a little ball that you can clamp down on your line. Um, these are great and it's going to help you, it doesn't really help with casting distance that much, but it will help if you're using a bobber to get your bait down in the strike zone faster. Um, and the second type is disc weights, and these are meant for areas that have current, and so they're not tumbling down the river, that they'll just hold on the bottom because there's little resistance when the water goes over them. But this is a one ounce weight, and if you only had to pick one, I would go with this one ounce weight. The other type that's not up here right now, and we'll go over it when we get into my small fishing kit is a bass casting sinker and I recommend having those in a half ounce or smaller weights so small bass casting would be intermediate and then your large weights would be the disc sinkers now if you're fishing an area with a lot of current then you need to go to two three four five ounce disc sinker but simplifying your weight selection you can get away with these just these two add a bass casting option there right in the middle the next thing that I'd recommend is having bobbers. And bobbers, you know, this, some people think that they're just for kids. But what bobbers allow you to do is fish certain depths of water. So let's say you're fishing um, water that's 10 feet deep, but the bluegill or whatever are sitting at 5 feet. But they're out away from the shore. So if you cast out with just a weight, what happens is your line's going to go straight to the bottom. But with a bobber, you can put a 5-foot leader and then a hook. And then when you cast it out, your bait's going to be sitting in 5 feet. Bobbers also allow you to adjust the depth that you're fishing pretty easily. Now, I prefer these torpedo or um, foam type bobbers. Uh, and the reason why I like them is that they're better than the hard plastic ones and that if you throw them into a rock, they're usually not going to break. But if you crack those hard plastic ones, you're just going to lose them. Um, you might as well just throw them away. So from prepping purposes, I recommend that you stock these foam type bobbers. I really like the ones with the weight and you can have different sizes. With bobbers, fish feel resistance. So if you're fishing for a picky fish, um, you want to use a smaller bobber if you can get away with it. Um, but your bait size or offering that you're giving to the fish could pull your bobber under the water. Or if you're fishing with live bait, since it's going to be swimming around, you might want to use a larger bobber so it cannot pull it down under the water. So once the bobber goes down under, you know you have a larger fish on there and it's time to set the hook. But again, in, in short, for bobbers, I recommend the foam type bobbers. Preferably with the lead weight at the bottom. Next, let's talk about swivels. And swivels, they're going to allow you to do a couple different things. This type of snap swivel... Um, basically allows you to tie the circular end to your main line and then the snap end you can use it to attach to other things maybe a fishing lure or another type of swivel um, this three-way swivel what it allows you to is a tie a line to your main line here going to your fishing pole and then you can have a line with a weight over here and then a line with a hook over here and it's going to allow you just to fish a little bit better and more securely if you're fishing for things like catfish so on my catfish rig this is what I really like and the handout that we're going to provide shows you how I rig up my catfish talking about rigs with the bobber rig I will have the bobber and it clips on right here and then also here then you have your length of line however deep you are then you can put your split shot on your line down here about six inches from where you want your hook and then put your hook underneath it and this is my my bluegill rig or my panfish rig and the, the handout will show you what I'm talking about 
The other option for bulk supplies um, is artificial baits, and I literally have hundreds of lures. Um, however, I don't account for them in my in my survival fishing, and that's because they're mainly for fishing in a boat and fishing a lot of water and covering water. In survival purposes, again, taking the small fish to large fish philosophy, I think the pan fish are the most important things. You can eat them. Also, like I said earlier, you can use them as bait. So all my artificial lures and stuff like that that I'm going to stock up on are going to be tailored to the pan fish species. First off, we have some grubs here, and these are about two inch grubs. And basically, you use them with a jig head, and the jig head provides weight. It also, depending on the size of it, controls the, the f speed of fall. And this is what a finished jig head looks like. You have a jig head and a hook, and then you just have a grub coming out of it. And you can catch bluegill with this, you can catch bass with this. I've caught, you know, five pound bass with this. I've caught a lot of big cats with this. I caught a 30 pound carp with this before. Um, that was a fight. But you can use this and it can catch a lot of fish, but again, it's made mainly for smaller fish. Another option is a cast master or some kind of blade type bait. Um, these are great for trout, and I use a little bit smaller than this for trout season, but they can also catch bass. It's very durable bait, it shines, and has good action. And then the last option that I'd recommend is something like a beetle spin. You can also get panther martens or something like that, but the beetle spins, at least at the pond that I fish right now, are great for panfish, usually the bigger size ones, and the colors are black and green. For grubs, you know, it, it depends on wh where you're fishing. If you're fishing for crappie, anything green generally works. Um, darker baits in my pond work for the, the bluegill. Whites, sometimes for the crappie, sometimes the small bass will eat them. But again, my artificial bait selection is tailored towards catching small fish. Now, how many supplies should you have? So, I took all these out of different bags that I have. Basically, anything I buy, I rebag. And so this is about you know 500 to 1,000 hooks somewhere in there and all the different sizes here. Um, and they're usually bagged into 20 to 30 hooks per bag. So I can, when I want to set up my kits, which we'll go over earlier, I can take a bag out and put it into a new kit. And it also allows me to keep my inventory. So this is just all hooks. These are my weights right now. I'm waiting to purchase some molds so I can pour my own weights because weights are pretty expensive. These are some of my grubs that I've separated from my main grub kit for when I go crappie fishing or pan fishing with grubs. But this will last me a couple months. Just my jig heads and other artificial bodies and things like that. And then my ch swivels and you know things that fix other lures or whatnot in here. And this is just the start of my supplies. You gotta understand, I have a lot of fishing equipment. I've been fishing for a long time. I've been fishing tournaments for a while. But this is, I keep this separate from my, my other tackle area because the thought process is if I need to run, I know I just need to go pick up this one toolbox with all these terminal tackle items instead of going through my, you know, dozen or so um, containers with lures. You know, I want everything consolidated. So now let's push all this aside. Don't try this at home. And let's talk about my Altoids survival can alternative. Now, again, when you're thinking of a survival, I can, you, you want to be able to pack stuff. You want weight, you know, you have to consider weight, and you have to consider a lot of things. But I know from fishing for a while that Altoids survival can is not going to last you that long. And it gives you a false sense of, you know, protection, you know, accomplishment, or whatever you want to call it. Because it's going to get you killed if you plan on eating fish for your primary source of protein. If you're going to do that, you need to have a lot of supplies. All right, and this again, this is my bulk stuff over here. But this is something I can just throw in my my bug out bag or my truck or whatever. And I take this fishing regularly, and it covers pan fishing to cat fishing or live bait fishing. For your container, since you have sharp hooks and most of the stuff in here is metal and is prone to rusting, um, I recommend getting spend in a few dollars on a waterproof container. This has a good gasket on it. I like the hinges. It never opens up and I've yet to break one of these. It's about five bucks but a great container. If I open this up, you see the type of quantity of supplies and basically I have everything that we've already covered in here. 
Um, I have 40 grubs, white and chartreuse, and about 10 jig heads in here. I have an eraser, so if I need to put a hook in there to keep it or set up some rigs, pre-rig them, I can just hook them in here. I got some Cast Masters 2 in silver and gold. I got two sets of these lures right here, these beetle spins that we discussed earlier. I got two small barbers. Three large bobbers if I'm going to be using live bait or fishing, you know, with cut bait for catfish. I got swivels. I got five three-way swivels and five snap swivels. I got a little crankbait and some Panther Martins in here. Forty plain shank hooks in this package. Fifty. Aberdeen hooks in sizes 4 and 6. Some bass casting sinkers that we discussed earlier. Split shots in various sizes. About 60 of those. Five 1 ounce disc sinkers. And 12 3 uh, circle hooks for catfish. So I fit all of this in this kit. This kit, depending on what kind of waters I'm fishing, can last me a couple months or longer. If I'm fishing some gnarly waters, it might only last me a month. But this is something that will provide sustained ability and sustainability to catch some fish. And if I have my truck with me, I always have all this other stuff in reach, which will probably last about a year's worth of fishing tackle. Again, fishing items are one of those things that are highly barterable, and I recommend stocking up on them now. Thanks for watching.